Anomaly Inc. is a hypocrite. He's a Star Wars fanatic who has a show called Revenge of the Prequels in which he calls out people on their bullshit reasonings and vague arguments as to why the prequels are bad. Which is a premise I actually really like because I very much dislike it when people trash something and hate on it without any solid evidence or background. However, Anomaly Inc. is also a toxic Star Wars fan and I want to talk about him. But firstly, since in my last video I got called one-sided. I wanted to show how you can find positives and negatives with any movie. And to show this, I'm going to briefly praise and criticize each of the Star Wars trilogies. And let me start with the prequels because people say I'm biased against them. Now the good thing about the prequels is that they expanded upon the amazing lore that the first trilogy had created. It led to an amazing time period, awesome new planets, and cool characters. Not necessarily good characters, but cool characters who acted as good templates for further development in the Clone Wars. Which by the way is an amazing show that really fixes many of the glaring problems of the prequel. And that show wouldn't have been made without the prequels. Ewan McGregor is also trying his damn hardest and produces a good performance in the third movie. And um, yeah I guess Revenge of the Sith isn't nearly as bad as the first two. However, the prequels lack many character arcs, their plots are convoluted and messy, and the dialogue is boring. I don't care if this is how the Jedi and other important people in the universe are supposed to talk, it's still boring and lifeless. From a story point of view, yes, all this makes sense, but from a film point of view, it just doesn't work. For example, The Phantom Menace is just pointless. The only idea from the movie that has any relevance to the rest of the movies is Anakin's relationship with his mom, and maybe Padme. But those scenes could have easily been cropped into the beginning of Attack of the Clones, instead of the useless chase scene and the infuriating factory scene. Then the second film could have involved the Clone Wars, and we could have seen Anakin and Obi-Wan's relationship flourish, show Anakin as a conflicted hero, and let the Jedi be heroes with flaws instead of a cynical group of hypocrites with no character traits. This would have made Anakin's turn to the dark side and the fall of the Jedi so much more meaningful and impactful. Now we move over to the sequels. I feel the sequels generally have the best acting of any of the trilogies, and they have exciting characters. Like Luke's character arc in The Last Jedi, is the best and most well-written arc in all of Star Wars. The Force Awakens brought life back into Star Wars and was a great homage that had the similar feeling of Star Wars, but differed in the emotions it made you feel. The Last Jedi had some of the best character subversion I've ever seen, and every character development just feels right and earned. However, there wasn't a solid plan from the beginning, which really hurts the Rise of Skywalker and the trilogy as a whole. Some of the humor just didn't land and takes you out of the immersion, some plot lines are pointless and don't serve the story very well, like the Canto Bite scene. The Rise of Skywalker has no backbone, and it's afraid to be creative. Even though I like the sequels, I acknowledge they have flaws, just like any movie can have. The originals created the universe, and without Lucas's insane imagination and vision, this beloved franchise never would have been created. The characters are generally likable and interesting, and Luke and Han have good character arcs. The visual effects were groundbreaking, and these movies have gone down in cinematic history. However, the dialogue in places seems forced and awkward, represented through inhuman acting. No one reacts to sad shit in these movies. Return of the Jedi falls short compared to the previous ones with lacking character for Han and Leia, and erased plot points from the previous movies. <sighs> Alright, I hope I've proved my point that all movies can be praised and criticized. The point of this video is not to say people can't have opinions, I'm just trying to point out this guy's bullshit reasonings and hypocritical criticisms of other people. He's basically criticizing others for making vague and unsupported claims about the prequels while he's doing the exact same thing for the sequels. The first video of his that I saw was the one on I Hate Everything. I don't like people like I Hate Everything, not because he dislikes the prequels as everyone has a right to their opinion. I don't like people like I Hate Everything because they are a bunch of gigantic malicious hypocrites. You say you don't like people who are malicious towards the creators and you mentioned Jake Lloyd and Ahmed Best which is a great example of the effect of toxic Star Wars fans. However, you yourself are being malicious towards the sequels. Like, just look at your intro. The main thing is to protect these characters, make sure that they still continue to, to live in the way that you created them. Can I just say, yes. though, a lot of times I would say to Ryan, we got to think about the fans. Yeah. And he said, no, we got to think about the story and we got to think about our movie. Which I, you know. This is toxic! I don't care if you have some detailed reason as to why you dislike the movie somewhere on your channel, but the fact is that you're being vague in your arguments that lack any support. This is what you're accusing people of doing to the prequels. If you'll go to the ends of the earth protecting your dear prequels, then do it. 
No one fucking cares. But don't start attacking other people for having a problem with them. And liking a movie you personally despise. These are double standards you have. As for the special editions, some of the changes like the cantina scene and Hayden Christensen and a few inserted creatures were jarring changes. I can tell you from a storytelling perspective why the remastered versions of the original trilogy make the movies worse. Because since you like to counter vagueness with facts, let me do the same to you. George Lucas changed the Han shot first scene, not just once, but multiple fucking times. Greedo now says, McClunky, and shoots Han, who then breaks his neck and kills Greedo in self-defense. This is a complete contradiction to who Han was in the scene. Han was a scumbag. He was selfish. He wasn't all black and white as we had seen previous characters like Leia and Darth Vader. Han shooting Greedo set up his character arc from a selfish criminal who wasn't afraid to kill to save his own skin, to a rebellious hero who has compassion and cares about his friends. This is an amazing character arc, but it's ruined by these dumb and useless changes. I respect George Lucas so much. He created this universe which I love to death, but he also fucked up once in a while. And yes, even though you shouldn't be toxic and hateful, it's alright to point out the flaws that a film creator makes. This is way more than you ever do. However, the true video we'll be discussing today is his recent video on Cosmonaut Variety Hour, who made a video called Why the Prequels Suck. Now I've followed Cosmonaut for a while and I mostly agree with his videos. Even though I sometimes have conflicting opinions, I still respect his perspectives because he generally backs them up with actual examples. However, Anomaly Inc. here claims that Cosmonaut is a hypocrite, which I find fucking hilarious. So yeah, let's get into it. If he hates the prequels, that's perfectly fine. Well, apparently it isn't. Because whenever someone has a problem with them, you bash their heads in the same way you claim prequel haters do to George Lucas, Jake Lloyd, and Ahmed Bess. You spill out hateful comments towards them. You're a hypocrite. But if you're going to go on the internet and say that they suck, you're implying that they are of bad quality, which is an objective statement. You can like a movie that is generally thought to not be very good. Like I personally love The Forbidden Kingdom, which objectively is confusing and messy. But in my opinion, it's fucking epic. But opinion can only take you that far. Cosmonaut has studied film for a long, long time, and when you study film, you learn about what makes a good scene, a good plot, good acting, good directing, good writing. There's a reason some films win the best picture, and others don't. A professional engineer will know more about engineering than someone who has watched Bob the Builder their whole life. Objectively, a movie can be good or bad, and yes, people have opinions, but Cosmonaut reviews these movies from a critical standpoint. Alright, now I'm skipping through a lot of this video because it's 42 minutes fucking long and only part one out of five. So I can't possibly discuss everything. I want to, but I can't. I'd highly recommend you watch this video. It'll be in the description because it's, it's just hard for me to show his exact points in the small clips from his videos that I show. And yeah, it'll just give you more context to why I'm so annoyed. It wasn't until I was tricked into liking another movie on my first viewing that I decided to start thinking for myself. Who the fuck tricked you into liking The Last Jedi? Chris Stuckman reviews movies, and he liked the movie, so he said that he liked the movie on his channel. That's not him trying to trick you into liking The Last Jedi. That's just his opinion, which millions of people seem to care about. On the other hand, you're doing what you accuse him of doing, tricking people into disliking the sequels and liking the prequels. That's what this whole video is about. You're contradicting yourself. Oh, how come Obi-Wan can defeat a Sith Lord all by himself when his master couldn't even do that? How come Luke is really good at using the Force without getting any training? Star Wars characters are really lucky and they're really good at shit because they're the main characters of a stupid action adventure series. Yet people only care that Rey is really good at shit and it drives me fucking crazy, man. Do you have any self-awareness? <laughs> Wait, what? That's your argument to him saying the Mary Sue criticism should be applied to all characters, not just Rey? Do you have any self-awareness? What does that even mean? This video is filled with poorly developed arguments, and whenever he says something that you don't have a comeback to, because he's right, you just choose to attack him instead. You're a shit channel with shitty arguments and a shitty avatar. Shitty arguments? You haven't given an actual argument this whole video. It's extremely ironic that you say he has bad arguments, when you answered his argument with, do you have any self-awareness? Honestly didn't think this guy was very toxic in the beginning. It was just going to be a small video on some of his flawed points. But then he uploaded this fucking video. And holy fuck, I'm having an aneurysm. The Disney films are showing the fans what actually bad writing, characters, and a lack of imagination looks like. I really love this argument. 
because people don't understand what a good or bad character is. A good character has a compelling arc, realistic motivations, and actual emotions. A bad character lacks these traits. If you think some of the characters in the sequels are written poorly, then that's fair. That's your opinion, but at the same time, you're praising a trilogy who has characters such as Count Dooku, General Grievous, Mace Windu, and Qui-Gon Jinn, who are all flat characters who don't operate outside of the plot. It's not valid to have a problem with Rose, Holdo, Poe, and Hux, if you think these other characters are good. I'm still waiting on your examples. Showing the pod race sequence certainly doesn't help your argument. Well, where the fuck are your examples? He says the original ideas in the prequels aren't shown properly, and you say that the sequels have bad writing. He didn't give examples, but you haven't given any examples either in this whole video. You're so locked in your own mind that your opinions are so unwavered by anything that they begin to lose their meaning. Showing the pod racing scene definitely helps his argument. That scene is too drawn out, has no significant impact other than being something cool to look at. But sadly, it's more enjoyable than any of the character interactions, which given how uneventful this scene is to the whole story, is sad. It's not a good scene. It's fucking boring. Okay, checklist time. Politics. Boring. No. Politics aren't boring necessarily. This movie just makes them boring. The Dark Knight, for example, has a shit ton of politics, like Harvey Dent's campaign, the Joker's chaotic and terror-filled ideology, and people's this growing distrust in Batman. Wait a second. Those are the exact same political plot points as the prequels. Like Palpatine's campaign, Darth Sidious' chaotic and terror-filled ideology, and the growing distrust in the Jedi. But then why is one of these movies engaging with exciting and exhilarating characters, edge of the chair moments, and deep emotional themes, while the other has uninspired and lifeless scenes, dull character interactions, and lack of character. One is remembered for these political features, while the other is criticized for it. Saying people just don't like politics is a false statement. But I draw the line at idiots like you saying what Star Wars should and should not be. But you do that. Right after you say this, you go off bashing the sequels just because you don't like them. You say George Lucas had the final say because he created and owned the series, but now that Disney own and create Star Wars movies, they don't have the final say because you don't like the movies they made. We felt joy with Anakin upon his triumph at the pod race. <laughs> no, we didn't. We don't care because we knew he'd win. There are no stakes. The only risk of this race is Anakin dying, which we know won't happen because he's fucking Anakin. When you make a prequel and everyone knows how these characters turn out, you need to try a lot harder to come up with realistic consequences. Out of what is possible jealousy for Anakin. Do these really sound like characters who don't express how they feel or exhibit any character traits? Are these characters we can't relate to on a deeper level? No character in this movie shows real emotion, and humans attach themselves to other humans based on emotions. Qui-Gon being compassionate is not an emotion. Obi-Wan telling a joke is not an emotion. Because we don't know why they do it. Why is Qui-Gon compassionate? Why does Obi-Wan tell jokes? You don't necessarily need to explain every detail of a character, but since these are in your words their most influential character traits, we should as an audience understand why they are the way they are. No character in this movie resonates on an emotional level, and the only reason they do is because of outside sources. <sighs> Alright, but that was Anomaly Inc. My heart rate kept rising throughout the making of this video so much that now I probably said it around 3000. The hypocritical statements from this man who acts as the savior of Star Wars is hard to watch without wanting to get drafted for World War 3. He acts as though the movies couldn't have been written in any other way. That the criticism people have wouldn't have fit into the story of the movie. Well yeah, this story doesn't lend itself to interesting scenes, dynamic characters and realistic emotions because it's such a linear film. It may have a complex plot, but it's a really simple movie. But not in the good way. It just leaves so much to be desired, and I wish it could have been remade. But again, I don't want to be one-sided. I think the same thing of The Rise of Skywalker. They should have followed through with the ideas of The Last Jedi, given more character development, and not been so damn afraid of toxic Star Wars fans. I wish these movies had been different, but they aren't, and I still love them. I'm just here to point out the people who are being toxic hypocrites. Love and hate a movie all you want, but don't degrade and attack a person for having a different opinion. That is being a toxic Star Wars fan. And as long as these people are out there, then I'll keep making videos on them. So good news, I won't ever stop making videos. Because there will always be toxic Star Wars fans. Thank you all so much for watching. This took way too much out of me to make, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. 
If you enjoy these longer, more thought out videos, then tell me down in the comments. They take longer to make, but I also feel they come out well. Anyways, if you liked the video, then like and subscribe for more. See you all.